Welcome to Television Sydney News, I'm Amy Richardson, it's great to have you with us. In this week's bulletin, the axing of the baby bonus in the federal budget receives a cool reception, Wilton an expensive option for Sydney's second airport and Sterlo makes a comeback for the Parramatta Eels. But first, a man who was viciously attacked at Blacktown has called for his two assailants to come forward. David Borthwick is still taking liquid food through a straw after the unprovoked assault outside the Sportsman's Hotel on April 27 that broke his jaw in three places and smashed several teeth. The 29-year-old says the attackers don't deserve to breathe the same air as him. Blacktown Police Detective Inspector Adam Wilson says there's no excuse for the violence. The fracture to the jaw was so severe that uh, it, in fact it forced his jawbone um, out the bottom of, of his jaw to protrude any, any required surgery uh, and some reconstruction to repair that. Mr Borthwick has been unable to return to work since the attack. His mother Marie called for witnesses to come forward. Police have released CCTV footage of a man they believe may be able to assist with their inquiries. He is described as being of Pacific Islander or Maori appearance, 18 to 25 years old, with short black hair. The federal government's decision to axe the baby bonus in the latest budget has received a cool reception in the West. The federal budget has been described as people-oriented, with emphasis on funding the National Disability Insurance Scheme and Gonski School reforms. But Peakhurst Heights couple Ellen and Angela Rositas say they feel for families who will miss out on the baby bonus. Mrs Rositas, who gave birth to the couple's first child on Tuesday, says having a baby is expensive and she appreciates the payment. $1.8 billion was also allocated to the West Connects motorway in the budget, but the money won't be provided for several years. Under other budget measures, the cost of a typical packet of cigarettes will rise by seven cents early next year, and the medical expenses tax offset will be phased out. While there will be no increase in unemployment benefits, recipients will be able to earn an extra $19 a week before their payment is reduced. Building Sydney's second airport at Wilton would cost a billion dollars more than Badgerys Creek, according to a new report. But Federal Transport Minister Anthony Albanese has called for more studies into the option. His decision has angered Wilton residents, some 1,500 of whom would be exposed to aircraft noise similar to that currently being suffered by people around Sydney Airport. Resident spokesman Brian Williams says further investigation of mine subsidence on the site was a waste of money. Wallandilly Council says there's no merit in putting an airport in Sydney's drinking water catchment. The state government will spend $200,000 to find out what's causing water loss in Thelmere Lakes. The funding will be used to monitor the lake's water levels, rainfall and evaporation. An independent panel commissioned by the government found climate change was the main cause of the changes in the lake's water levels. Environment Minister Robin Parker says a recent report by the panel did not find any evidence of a direct link between mining and the lakes drying out. The historic crossing of the Blue Mountains 200 years ago has been celebrated by a reenactment that began in St Mary's on Saturday. Descendants of William Lawson, Gregory Blacksland and William Charles Wentworth began the gruelling 21-day trek with horses, dogs, children and convicts in tow. They were farewelled at a breakfast celebration and poetry reading by actor Jack Thompson, who said the reenactment was a great way to celebrate Australia's history. Seven men, horses, five dogs, setting out totally into the unknown. They had no idea what they would find. And they came back having found what would amount to the assured future of the fledgling colony. A plaque was unveiled at the Clock Tower Memorial in Penrith in the afternoon, where a crowd welcomed the walkers and enjoyed another poetry reading. The trek will continue until May 31, finishing in Hartley on the western side of the mountains. A Western Sydney high school teacher has turned to social media to raise funds for a student film festival. Christina Pollard reports. Kingswood High School teacher Tim Crichton needed just $250 to cover the cost of the festival, run as a practical way to learn about film. Last year, 25 students made stop-motion films for the festival because the school didn't have the equipment or funds to make standard motion films. There wasn't the money in the school for it, so I needed to think outside of the square and, and get some, some funds for it. Mr Crichton set up a page on crowdfunding website possible.com to buy resources including a camera and microphone that would allow students to make films to enter the festival. I set $250 and that was because I was so desperate 
uh, I thought, I need to guarantee I can make 250 bucks. The campaign was such a success, he raised $1,400 and has now begun a second fundraiser with a target of $5,000. Students, like last year's winner Sean Fard, plans to enter the festival again in 2013. It was a really good way for us to express feelings because some of us um, were a bit sad and we put that into a movie and we actually won last year. Mr Crichton says traditional fundraisers only go so far and that schools should be looking at more innovative ways to get money. I wasn't aware of any other school doing it, but I know of at least one now. At the age of three, Yuri Abrosimov decided he wanted to run away with the circus. The love affair started when he went on a family outing to the circus, saw the clowns and decided to join them in the ring. He didn't hear his parents calling him back, so he stayed there for a few minutes and made the audience laugh. After that, he was hooked. Abrosimov is in Castle Hill this week to perform with Michael Edgeley's Great Moscow Circus before travelling to Penrith and on to Rose Hill. As well as being the show's artistic director, Abrosimov performs as a clown and is responsible for choreography, music, costuming and production. Michael Edgeley's company invited me to, to do my acts in this circus. I saw the, the show what they did a few years ago, it was a great, fantastic show and uh, I had ideas to do more Russian things to Great Moscow Circus with uh, my personal uh, vision. He says Russians have a special relationship with the circus. As you know, Circus du Soleil ha has 80% uh, of Russians, yeah, and because the, we love the circus, and uh, that's why we try to keep our um, uh, tradition and show the Australians to sharing our skills, our emotions, our positive to do the best and do the best show in Australia. 20 Western Sydney residents are the stars of a promotional video designed to shatter misconceptions surrounding disability. The ICANN Community Awareness Campaign was shot at Bella Vista earlier this month. Blacktown, Mount Druitt, The Hills, Parramatta, Penrith and Ride residents recorded the campaign for disability services organisation Ability Options. Some of the content will feature in an advertising campaign on network television. 24-year-old Joshua Tague of Quakers Hill says he was delighted to help out. This video should help um, awareness for disability and what our organisation can do for the clients. Ability Options Executive Leader Nettie Burke says staff helped with script writing, set design, makeup and hairstyling on the shoot. It's about how if people with a disability have the right support, they can do anything. We've been very lucky to have Freedom donate their premises today and also the crew working here are all assisting us on a pro bono uh, basis. Tens of millions of people in the Philippines know who Nicole Schmitz is, but she walks the streets of Campbelltown unrecognised. The 23-year-old was born in Australia to a Filipino mum and German dad and was crowned Miss Philippines in 2012. The title took her to the Miss International pageant in Japan last October, where she finished in the top 10. Now back home after a year of TV appearances, speeches and charity work across Asia, the beauty queen said the experience was something she would tell her grandchildren about. And in sport, after 10 weeks of intense training with Australian champion Ryan Waters, a group of wannabe boxers fought it out at a sold out event at Sharkey's Leagues Club last weekend. The 10 participants didn't have backgrounds in boxing and underwent training sessions which saw them lose weight, tone up and become fighting fit for the lead up to the Fight Club tournament. Waters grew up in the Sutherland Shire and was once ranked fifth in the world. He retired in 2011 and has been holding the Fight Club competitions for the past four years. Inspired by the movie of the same name, the tournament encourages people that have never been in a fight to challenge themselves and give it a go. Just raw talent, you know, it's guys getting in there. They're not my most technical fights that, that, that you've ever seen, but they just they just give it all, you know, in front of all their friends and family. And they are Female participants are welcome, and Courtney Mawson says she has never experienced anything quite like Fight Club. I think for me, you know what you're coming in for, you know you're going to get hit in the head and you know all of that, but when it happens, completely different game. Peter Cole says it's an excellent experience to learn from a former professional boxer. It's good to have someone that actually can talk the talk and walk the walk as opposed to someone that's just giving orders. 
GWS Giants coach Kevin Sheedy has come under fire from Chifley MP Ed Husick after a controversial post-match press conference. Sheedy's side was handed a 135-point thumping by the Adelaide Crows at Skoda Stadium on Sunday, which attracted a crowd of just over 5,800. After the match, Sheedy told reporters the Giants didn't have a recruiting officer called the Immigration Department to get fans on board, like soccer's Western Sydney Wanderers did. He later defended his comments on social media, tweeting that the Wanderers had an advantage because most people migrating to Australia knew soccer. Husick, a Wanderers Foundation member, told ABC's Grandstand Breakfast program both codes had done good things for Western Sydney. He says the Giants' relocation of its headquarters from Rudy Hill to Homebush is the reason for poor attendances. Leonay teenager Nicole Doherty has qualified for the BMX World Titles in Auckland. Doherty placed at the recent Australian Championships in Brisbane and was also chosen as Australian Female Coach of the Year. Doherty is one of a handful of female coaches with 30 pupils at Penrith BMX Club St Mary's Circuit. One of her charges, a nine-year-old girl, finished second in Brisbane and is also off to Auckland in July. Pregnant race walker Becky Lee is aiming to get to Rio for the 2016 Olympics. The former Mount Druitt resident is hoping to be back on track in December, three months after the birth of her first child with partner Dan Smith. Lee competed at the London Olympics where she finished 28th with a personal best time in the 20km walk. The Indigenous athlete returns to Mount Druitt from Canberra this weekend to lead the Mount Druitt Reconciliation Walk on Saturday. And finally, even the most ardent Parramatta Eel supporters could have been forgiven for not recognising team captain Tim Manor at the launch of a new line of collectible footy cards this week. Manor underwent a two-hour transformation to look like Eels legend Peter Sterling, complete with blonde hair, short shorts and dazzling green eyes. A couple of the boys are already in the change rooms while I was getting done, um, snapping photos at the back, so yeah, no doubt there's going to be some sledging tomorrow and um, I've just got to brace myself for it and just bite the bullet. He says he was a big fan of the cards growing up, so he hopes modern day kids enjoy the new range of cards too. But he wasn't sure whether he was better looking as himself or Sturlo. I'd rather his, his skills at the moment. Um, you know, he had some up his sleeve, so hopefully I, I can inherit some of that well, now that of his looks. Manor, looking like himself again, will lead the team into battle against St George Illawarra on Saturday, looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year. The prop says the secret to a win against the Dragons team that includes the returning Josh Dugan is simple and doesn't involve trying to replicate any of Sterlo's chip kicks. And that's all for this week's Bulletin. For more information on any of these stories, pick up your local Fairfax community newspaper. I'm Amy Richardson. We'll see you next time.